there, namaste. Welcome to the show. I'm Bhavana Kesi. We all know that Nepal is a country that is rich in natural resources and boasts 118 ecosystems, 75 types of vegetation and 35 types of forest. The country has a diverse biodiversity and rich in flora and fauna. However, despite its huge wealth in natural resources, the country is able to exploit uh, the resources and reap the desired benefits. And, uh, in today's show, we have called a guest. Uh, we have called a guest. Our guest for today's show is Miss uh, Judy Wigglethrop, the chief of party USAID supported Horyuban program. The program that supports uh, that works primarily on biodiversity conservation, sustainable landscapes, and climate change. More we'll be knowing from Ms. Oglethrope. Welcome to the show, Judy. Thank you. Namaste. So uh, you have been uh, the chief of the party Horyuban program. Uh, so, can you tell us more about the activities of Horyuban program, its activities, the objectives in context of Nepal? Actually, uh, the program named Horyuban, that comes from famous Nepali proverb, Horyuban Nepal Kodan, yes. which translates into uh, the green forest, the wealth of Nepal. Yes. So, from the program name, it suggests it works primarily uh, for the conservation of biodiversity. Can you tell us more, can you elaborate more about the Horyuban program activities? Sure, so the, the main goal of the Haryuban program is to reduce vulnerability to climate change and threats to biodiversity in Nepal. We're working in two major landscapes, so in the um, center and western parts of the Terai, uh, which we call the Terai Arc, and then in the whole of the Gandaki Basin, so from Mustang down to Annapurna um, okay. across Manaslu Langtang, all the way down through the mid hills to Chitwan. So about 40% of the, of the country is actually covered by these two major landscapes, these two main conservation areas. Um, as you mentioned, we do a lot of work in biodiversity conservation. So we do species conservation, we're, but we're also looking at where do those species live. So for species like rhinos and tigers, okay. for example, in the, living in the Terai, um, the existing protected areas like Chitwan and Bardia are quite small for these species needs okay. and so they have small populations and so we're working to join up these protected areas so that the the populations don't become genetically isolated and eventually die up die out so we're working on um, linking with corridors and buffer zones so okay. that these species have a wider space and we're linking up isolated populations both within Nepal and then across the so border the program with is India. basically focusing Tarai arc landscapes and Chita uh, one uh, and a Purna landscape. Yes. Yes. Uh, so the Horyuban program, how has it been working in connection with the government, community forest and other stakeholders? Yeah, the, w the program works very closely with government. Uh, our main ministry is the Ministry of Forest and Soil Conservation. So we work with several of its, its departments. Uh, and then we're also working with local community organizations because that's where you know, the communities yes. are really responsible for the stewardship of the, of the community forests uh, and working with government uh, for the, you know, to support government in the stewardship of the protected areas. So any other uh, supporting agencies that has been supporting the Haryuban program to so operate the Haryuban yes, program? Yes, so Haryuban is managed by, is run implemented by a consortium of four organizations. So WWF Nepal is the lead, okay. uh, and then Care Nepal also, okay. and then two national organizations, okay. uh, FICA Fund, the Federation of Community Forests Nepal, which has um, almost 19,000 community forest members throughout the country, um, and the National Trust for Nature Conservation, which is working in the protected areas and buffer zones. Um, and so those two latter organizations are able to reach right down to work with the communities. It has already been uh, the program, the Horyoban program, it has already been five years the program is being run in Nepal. Yeah. And as you mentioned earlier, the program has been extended for next five years as well. Yeah. So what has been the primary uh, reason uh, for the extension and how has been the response from the stakeholders, the government entities or the local groups? Okay. Um, so I think uh, during the last five years, we've had a lot of results. Um, so for example, we've um, worked with government mm -hmm. to um, learn more about the Chitwan Annapurna landscape and have it recognized formally as a landscape, supported government to develop a, a, a 10 year strategy for it. Um, and then we've also helped in the Terai to further the conservation and, and then also worked to reduce the impacts of climate change on people and on nature. Uh, as well as helping to um, sequester 
sequester carbon, reduce deforestation, forest degradation, which releases carbon dioxide, and then helping to lock up carbon dioxide by restoring forests. Um, we've also done a lot of work with women and marginalized okay. groups, helping them to benefit from the forests and gain their fair share. So it has already so five years. What has yes. been uh, the outcome of the biodiversity conservation? We'll come to the uh, sustainable landscapes and climate change yeah. later on. But moreover, how, had, how, has, it be, how has it been? Uh, the okay. outcome of the biodiversity yeah. conservation in context of Nepal? Yeah, so the biodiversity conservation component, we've done a lot of work on species. Um, so working with communities okay. to uh, do um, anti-poaching work, restore uh, corridors. Uh, wh while we've been working, there have obviously been a lot of other stakeholders involved. Government has been very involved, communities, but the tiger numbers have more than um, doubled since the previous census, and the number of rhinos is also increasing, which is, is great news for, for Nepal. Definitely, it's a great yeah. news that number of rhinos and tigers is increasing, but uh, is the, uh, the forest area where it lives, actually, its habitat? Yeah. So how has it been, how, has, uh, how is the habitat, actually? Is it is appropriate for the number of, the growing numbers of rhinos or tigers as well? Yes. So, um, as I had mentioned before, the, the corridors are being reconnected okay. with areas so that they have a wider area to, to range in. We realize, though, that this also means increased human-wildlife conflict. So we've been working with local communities to um, reduce this conflict very often through um, supporting the erection of electric fences which okay. separates people from, from wildlife. And we've been doing this not only in the Terai, but also in the hills where species like snow leopard and bear um, may attack livestock. Basically yeah. for the conservation of endangered wildlife species. That's right, yes, yes. Okay, and, and that include red pandas, snow leopards, one hundred rhinoceros, yes. tiger, swamp deer, black deer, Yes. And water black, wild black buck. Black, black buck. Yeah. Black okay. yeah. Black buck and water wild uh, buffalo as and well. And water buffalo. We will be uh, working with government and NTNC to bring water buffalo from wild water buffalo from Koshitapo to Chitwan okay. National Park, where they used to occur, but they they have disappeared. We also helped to establish okay. a, a new population of black buck in Suklafanta, a wildlife reserve. Okay which was um, a major achievement because a few years later there was a major flood in Kairapur Reserve where they, um, the, the, the one place where they occur naturally and a large number were lost in the flood. So we were really pleased that we had been able to work with government and NTNC to establish an, an, a new population um, so that the species overall is less vulnerable in Nepal. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, the program, Haudiuban program, has been uh, supporting uh, the livelihood programs as well. You know that mm -hmm. Nepal is rich in flora and fauna. However, uh, it is a to reach a to get uh, the desired benefits or exploit the natural resources, basically to reduce the poverty. Yeah. So how has the Haudiuban program uh, supporting or contributing yeah. to reduce the poverty or running the livelihood programs? Yeah. So we, we realize that it's essential to help people to improve their livelihoods um, so that they can develop, so that they can move out of poverty and at the same time take pressure off forests where that pressure is unsustainable. We see use of forests is very important and we, we fully support that, but we try and make that use sustainable so that forests can continue their functions of protecting okay. people from landslides and floods and things like that um, and providing uh, resources on a sustainable basis. So we've done a lot of work um, on livelihood support programs. On livelihoods. Uh, so for example, we've been supporting people to develop alternative livelihoods if okay. they're livelihoods are, are unsustainable. Um, one area, for example, in Tanahun, where people have been doing shifting cultivation on okay. very steep slopes, causing loss of forest erosion, and where people really um, haven't been gaining very much, you know, they've been, it's been subsistence level, but they really okay. haven't had um, very good lives from it. So we've supported the district forest officer in To run the income Tanahun generating activities? To do income generating activities. So what they've done, which the, the district forest officer brought in from elsewhere was to plant broom grass. Broom grass is an amazing plant yes. because it stabilizes the soil. Yes. Um, people can make brooms out of it so they okay. can sell those. Uh, the leaves can be fed to 
uh, livestock for fodder and then you can you can burn the stalks but it's it's binding the soil and people are saying their their incomes have really gone up because of the selling the brooms you have been and mentioning that uh, majorly uh, you have achieved a success in biodiversity conservation but in contrary to what you said at the very same time uh, we have reports uh, from different parts of the country that people are um, destroying the forest area for the cultivation purpose yeah, so, so in this case, in the Tanahun case, where they were doing this shifting cultivation, so they would slash and burn the forest, plant crops like maize, uh, but the, then the soil would wash out, so they'd have to go and cut another area, then another area, which is very destructive for the forest, causes a lot of soil erosion, soil washes into the rivers, causes sedimentation. So the program is uh, so focused on discouraging, discouraging the people uh, from destroying the forest area yes, just for cultivation purposes? But, but helping them to develop alternative helping livelihoods. So well. the broom grass is a really great alternative okay. livelihood. They make much more money out of that exactly. than they did out of the, the previous crops. Um, they're more safe from landslides because the broom grass is binding the soil yes. and the water that when it rains, they s the, the people themselves are saying when it rains, whereas the water used to run red with the soil or running Muddy. off, now it runs clear. So they okay. have clean water to drink and there's less sediment going down to Chitwan okay. in the river, um, which gets deposited on people's fields and destroys agriculture further down. So do you mention as well, and the major concern, the wildfire that is quite common in Nepal, yeah. has been the major factor for the destruction of the wildlife across the country. How has the program uh, been supporting to reduce the wildfires yeah. in Nepal? Yeah, wildfires are a major threat to biodiversity yes. in Nepal. So uh, we've been working at various fronts. One, one thing that we've been doing is awareness. So exactly, awareness is much needed yes, because very people important. are. Uh, People are, they're occupied with the concept, we are with yeah. the concept that if they uh, cause the wildfire, then they can have better grass. Yes, but it, it actually what it does is it weakens the grass. If you, if you burn... Uh, but that's also causing the destruction to the uh, flora and fauna as well. That's right. So That has been neglected, but yes. more they focus on getting the greener grass or better grass next yes. season. Yes, but it... What it actually does, if it doesn't immediately rain, is it actually okay. weakens the grass yes. plants. So in the longer term, you, you get poorer grass. Um, but a lot of fires are also caused because people just are thoughtless. They maybe throw cigarette ends out of a car window, or they've been burning in a, in a field and they let it get out of control. So if people are careful to okay. protect the forests, we can cut down a lot of the, the, the wild fires, the uncontrolled fires, the unwanted fires in forests. And this is really important. Last year, okay. uh, last season rather, when the, the uh, pre-monsoon rains were so late, we saw huge numbers of fire and very hot fires. So those fires are burning into the canopy. Exactly. During into the, the month of March or April, yeah. there are much reports there yes. coming from different parts of the country that yeah. uh, there have been wildfires. So many fires. And the worry is, that, and that was because, because the, the pre-monsoon rains were late, it was really dry, it was really hot. Um, and if we get a number of years like that all in succession, which we may do because of climate change, um, the forests aren't going to be able to, to withstand several years of burning like that. You know, a few, a few, you know, a few years of, of one year of hot fire and then enough rain to, to damp it down is probably okay. But with climate change, the worry is that fires will become okay. hotter, more intense, more frequent and the f some species and tree species in the forest just won't be able to survive. <laughs> some trees need, trees need some fire, but on a controlled basis and, and not too frequently and not too hot. So the program is uh, giving the public, is conducting the public so awareness campaign? Yes, we're doing public awareness and then we have also, Besides? with some communities, we've given them equipment okay. to help them to fight fires, but safety is the number one concern, okay. people's safety. Equipping yeah. them with a technology and training them as well. Yes, yes. To and combat and the wildfires. Yes, it's easier to do it in the Terai where it's flat, but it's it's more d dangerous and difficult in, in the hills. Yeah, okay. Because of the terrain. Due to the topography. Due to the topography. Now, coming yeah. to the climate change, one of yeah. the working areas, the major working areas of the Horyoban program. Uh, so, climate change, it's a global burning issue. However, Nepal being a Himalayan nation, you know, uh, it is more vulnerable to the threats of yeah, the climate change. Yes. And besides that, uh, the CO2 emissions as well. Nepal is not the major manufacturer of the CO2 no. emissions, but Nepal has to suffer yes. from the CO2 emissions yeah. as well. How is the Horiban program working on the climate change particularly? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we are working on um, helping to reduce emissions um, and, and helping to get payments for, for that from country other countries okay. that are causing more emissions. Um, so for example, WWF Nepal has um, developed two uh, gold standard biogas projects. So by having so many thousand biogas plants, um, uh, it, it reduces carbon dioxide emissions by not burning firewood. And um, a, c a company in Switzerland uh, makes payments to Nepal okay. for those carbon credits. And so Nepal is actually earning money through that. Uh, we're also hoping to, we're, we're working with government very closely to develop um, what's known as Red Plus, which is um, reducing emissions through deforestation and, and uh, forest degradation. So reducing, by, by reducing forest uh, deforestation and, and forest degradation, it reduces emissions and um, hopefully other payments will, will come from that in the future. What is the process so for the payment? The annual estimate? Any annual estimate? It's all very carefully monitored. Um, what is the carbon standing stock at the beginning and then and then what is the what is the change in the carbon stock over the years and payments are based on, on results for that. So that's that's the on the emission side. But we know that even if all uh, man-made carbon emissions stop today, we've gone so far. But more than the money, stopping the CO2 emissions is more important. We, we need to do that. Yes. Um, but as you know, a lot of the emissions are coming in other countries. So we, we have the, um, the, the Climate Convention and other countries uh, working on that. But because climate change is real and it's already happening, we also have to help people to uh, become resilient to it, to adapt to it. So on the other side, we're also working on climate adaptation. Um, the main vulnerabilities that we, we see, and we've done over 400 vulnerability assessments at local okay. level with local communities and with VDCs. The, the main vulnerabilities that we see are things like people's water supplies are drying up. Um, there's increased the impact of the climate, of climate change. change. Yeah, so water supply is drying up. Irregular rain, people yes. don't know when there it's going to rain. There is actually excessive rain sometime, yeah. or there no rain, or yes. less monsoonal That's rain. That's right, yes. Um, and then also very heavy rain when it yes. does rain, uh, which causes more soil erosion and more risk of floods. Um, so these are, these are some of the main impacts that we, we're seeing. So these are the impacts actually. Yeah. How has the program been uh, effortful in containing yeah. the growing impacts of climate change? Because Nepal is a mountainous country. Yeah. And there are lots of Himalayas. That's right. Uh, that yeah. stand above 8,000 meters yes. as well. Yes. Eight, 800,000 meters as well. So we've been working with local communities to see how they're vulnerable. And depending on how they're vulnerable, um, if it's water supplies, for example, we may do rainwater harvesting. Uh, we may help them to restore their water catchment by okay. re reforesting it, particularly the recharge areas where water goes into the ground. So any into particular the efforts made by Oriban program uh, for containing the outburst of glaciers, because Nepal has m several glaciers, and a few uh, weeks back there were media reports that the Imja Lake in Solo, yeah. it, it was causing the threat uh, uh, to the downstream uh, settlement, mm -hmm. so the water level. Yeah. It has yeah. to be receded, it has to be drained. So any such efforts made by Urban Program uh, in, the, uh, in containing the glacier outburst as well? We have done one, um, one bit of work on uh, look at looking at the risk of, of um, glacial lake outburst floods. Um, for Gopchi Lake, which is, which is in Kaski District, okay. it's on the, above the Madi River, um, above Cyclus. So we funded a study that was done to look at, you know, what was the risk of that lake? That lake is growing very fast. Okay. So what is the risk of, of an outburst flood from that? And also, what is the possibility of installing an early warning system? So we've done that study, and hopefully in Haryoban too, that work can be carried, carried forward. So any other efforts made uh, to reduce the climate change besides that? Uh, yes, so we've been working with, uh, with people to think about uh, agriculture. So because of the irregular rainfall, okay. what can we do? So we've done things like polytunnels so that people can grow crops out of season. Um, okay. We've been doing drip irrigation. Okay. Um, so working with partners to bring in new technologies so that uh, people can, can use less water. 
Um, that has been the activities. Moreover, I'm interested in knowing the measures uh, being undertaken to reduce the impacts of the climate change itself. Yeah. So these, this is, this is what we. So okay, um, we've been helping people to respond, but then we've also been doing things like uh, stabilizing potential landslide okay. sites okay. Um, by restoring forests, doing planting, doing okay. bioengineering. Um, and then also trying to reduce people's vulnerability to flooding. Okay. Um, and the natural disaster management part as well. Yes, that's right. Yes, because there's a very close link between climate adaptation yes, and exactly. disaster. Yes, uh, exactly. Lately, disaster Nepal management. has been uh, getting. Uh, there are. Uh, we have the reports that there have. There are lots of uh, dry landslides across the country, and no, nobody yeah. forgets the Jure landslide at yeah. Sindupal a few years yeah. back. Yeah. So that was the major landslide. Mm -hmm in yes. the country. So how has the program been supporting on the natural disaster management part as well? So um, particularly uh, working on landslides, um, but then also on flooding. Um, these are, these are, and, and then the, the water supply question. So those are the three major things okay. that we've been working on in terms of, of natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Flooding, we've been both um, doing small scale constructions like embankments, but also helping people to restore the natural function of rivers. Because rivers, um, as they flow, as they flood, they normally want to spill into their floodplains. And then the floodplains abs absorb the flood and mean it, there's less flood downstream. But if you have a lot of development in those floodplains, okay. the river can't go there anymore. And so the flood has to go downstream instead and it gets so worse. So you mentioned so one of the programs of the Horyoban is green recovery and reconstruction. Yeah. You know that Nepal uh, suffered huge loss of lives and properties due to the April 25 yeah, devastating earthquake, last year's earthquake. Uh, so uh, due to result of the earthquake, you know, there was loss to the natural resources as well. Yes. We have reports that the water resources have gone dried up. In Besides that, uh, there were reported deaths of wildlife as well. And also there were reports of the avalanche. Yeah. And uh, there were avalanche and the, also the uh, trails that were da damaged yeah. uh, due to the earthquake as well. Yeah. So the program, uh, Green Recovery and Reconstruction, how has it been working in the post-earthquake scenario? Yes, yes. Um, we were very fortunate to get additional funding from USAID to do um, earthquake recovery work. And so we worked both um, in the field in four districts and then we also worked at central level with other sectors. Um, we worked with uh, Nepal government and other partners uh, um, to provide inputs to the post-disaster okay. post needs assessment and then the post-disaster recovery framework. We also did a rapid environmental assessment okay. uh, which helped us to identify what the priorities were. Okay. Um, there was a lot of damage at the time. So, for example, two percent of forests were lost in landslides um, in the in some of the worst affected districts. Uh, and um, so we've been, but we've been really focusing a lot on on um, earthquake recovery and reconstruction. And what are the risks of environmental impacts from that, and how can we reduce them? Uh, so, for example, we know that. Um, several hundred thousand houses were destroyed or okay. damaged and have to be rebuilt. So how are they going to be rebuilt? What are they going to be rebuilt from? There's a lot of rubble there, so as much as possible, people should reuse materials. So reuse timber, reuse okay. stone that's uh, from, the, from the former buildings. But inevitably, they need a bit more materials as well. So where is that timber going to come from? There isn't enough cell timber. So in how has it been working to regenerate the water resources? So. In terms of water resources? The dried water resources. Yeah, so um, we've been working with communities uh, to think about if, if water sources have dried up, what are the alternatives? Maybe rainwater harvesting okay. can help. Maybe they can get water from other places, but not in a way that would result in more conflict with people in other places. Okay, Julie, we um, have come almost to the end of the okay. show, but before we wrap up, I want to know that one of the program outcomes of the Haryuban was to minimize the rate of deforestation and mm -hmm. uh, direct uh, degradation. Yeah. Uh, so the program has already been running for last five years. So what is the achievement? Yeah, okay, so I think we have achievements on many fronts. We've worked with, with many, many um, community forest user groups and buffer zone groups and with government to restore forests okay. and restore corridors. Um, we've helped to um, conserve species, okay. including endangered species. Um, we've helped to sequester carbon through the through the forest So how has the program process. been conducting the monitoring and evaluation of the project as well? 
Yeah, so we have a monitoring system through our partners okay. and we um, collect data. We also had a midterm evaluation by USAID and by Social Welfare Council. Um, and we will also have a final evaluation before we, we go into the second phase. Okay, so any success stories you'd like to share with us? Um, well, I think we, we have a lot of success stories. We've changed a lot of people's okay. lives, particularly women and marginalized groups, and we've really had a major focus on them. We've been empowering women to uh, claim benefits from okay. forests, claim their fair share, and empowering them to help to manage forests because of the out-migration of men, particularly women are going to have to play a bigger role. Um, we've uh, we've also had a lot of successes i think in um working with other sectors in the uh earthquake re reconstruction encouraging them to adopt sound okay the program practices. has been extended for next five years we wish you all the best uh, for you. achieving for having more achievement we have come almost to the end of the show thank, thank you me. judy for joining us and telling us more about the Haribon program thank you very much thank you it was a pleasure to talk to you well, viewers, that was Ms. Judy Wigglethrop, Chief of Party, USAID-supported Horuban Program. She was uh, briefing us about the Horuban Program and its efforts made on the arena of biodiversity conservation, uh, sustainable landscapes, and climate change. Well, thank you for joining us. We thank you for joining us, and do stay tuned with NTV News, and have a good day ahead. Namaste.